be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your heart? Look at me. Look at my hands and my feet. That it is I myself. Touch me and see. Because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as I can see, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophet and Psalms will be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Third week of Easter, and we should be in the spirit of Easter. What can the spirit of Easter do for us? Above all, one of the many things that the spirit of Easter should be having an effect of us is when you see the cross coming your way, when you see the cross knocking at your door, when difficulties, challenges come your way, suffering and pain comes your way, when death comes your way, what do you do? In the spirit of Easter, inspired, spirit inside, inspired by Easter, when you see that, you should run towards and embrace it. That's what the spirit of Easter should inspire you. Why? Because in the spirit of Easter we know, indeed, Christ suffered, Christ died, but God rose him from the dead. The Father drew out of the suffering, out of the cross, a greater good. And if that's the case in Christ Jesus, and I am in Mers, born anew in the person of Christ, what happens to Christ happens to me. What happens to me happens to Christ. If the cross comes my way, I embrace it because it is through the cross that I'm able to experience the resurrection, the greater good. Let me take it a different approach. So I, two weeks that I was gone, five days I was able to spend some time with uh, priest friends and just sleep, a lot of recuperation, sleep, talk, have good food, sleep some more, <laughs> talk. Uh, so it was five days of recuperation. Then I had to come back earlier from vacation to do baptisms. We, we have eight kids who were baptized last Saturday, not yesterday, but the Saturday before. We couldn't find a priest or someone to baptize, so I had to come back. Uh, and then once I was here, then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I just stayed at the rectory and did it like a little retreat, a little retreat time, just praying in silence and meditating. And, um, and I was pondering on 
the, the topic of suffering. And with this intuition and the spirit of Easter, what if, in the end, suffering is not bad? What if, in the end, suffering is actually something beautiful and fruitful? And of course, it sounds weird what I'm saying, and it does, but I was going in the spirit meditating upon that. But what if? What if suffering and death, what if the cross, as horrible as it looks, and as horrible as it is, what if in embracing this mystery of the cross, what if when you do so, all of a sudden you begin to see its beauty, its goodness, its fruitfulness? What? In the spirit of Easter is the confidence that we have that if I am called to carry a cross, then that cross, I will embrace it in the confidence that sooner or later, if I stay long enough, if I just stay there, don't come down from the cross, if I just stay embracing it, sooner or later, the beauty, the goodness, and the fruitfulness of the cross will come out. I think it's something similar to a mother about to give birth. If she endures those labor pains, if she collaborates with the contractions, if she embraces the mystery of the cross and she endures it to the end, sooner or later, it bears forth life that otherwise you won't have. Now, of course, some of you are thinking, no, no, just put the injection, cut me up, I'll take the baby out, we're done. <laughs> No, it doesn't work that way. You have to go through the mystery of the cross. I remember when I was doing my myological studies, I uh, came uh, across this beautiful imagery, uh, very poetic, you know, like an, you know, a very artistic. And it was the image of Jesus at the cross, Mary at the foot of the cross, and Mary looking at her son, who is enduring the cross, the suffering, the pain. He's hanging. He doesn't want to come out. He, he will not come out because this is his mission. For this, he's been sent. This is his hour. This is the whole mission to be accomplished in Christ Jesus in his suffering and his death. So he's there. But there is at the foot of the cross a mother. And what mother delights in seeing their, your child suffering? No. She's suffering with him. She's embracing the cross in her own way by joining her sorrows and her pains to seeing his son in suffering and pain. And then this story goes that then Mary, not wanting the son to fail at his mission, but just longing to love her son, to encourage the son in the midst of his suffering, in the midst of his cross, Mary says to the cross, not to Christ, says to the cross, bow down before me that I may embrace my son. And to have the visual of the cross, rigid, rough, intimidating, dark, powerful, because when we see the cross, indeed it is. And Mary then saying to the cross, bow down, Mary, who speaks out of a desire of a maternal love, out of love, and love having an authority beyond the power of the rigidity of the cross, and the cross just going, <laughs> and embracing the two. There's something about the mystery of the cross that if we are inspired in the spirit of Easter, when we see our cross coming our way, you should be, instead of running away, inspired with the confidence that after the cross, after the suffering, after the labor pains, life, goodness, beauty, out of this Easter spirit, we should be able to run towards the cross and embrace it. 
stay there. Because ultimately, when you're embracing the cross, you're embracing Jesus Christ. And if you're embracing Jesus Christ, then the cross is embracing you. And in the mystery of the suffering, the passion, the death of Christ, when you die to yourself, and you embrace this cross that is yours all the way to the end, then life emerges, beauty goodness, fruitfulness. So as we you have to embrace the cross. <laughs> so we come to the third week of Easter. What can the spirit of Easter do for us? I hope it inspires you to embrace your cross, to endure it, but with the confidence that in doing so, you're embracing Christ, and that in Christ, you will experience the goodness, the beauty, and the fruitfulness that comes from the mystery of the cross.